Good evening, everybody. Joe from NDB Aviation, and tonight I'm going to be talking to you about how the Bravo Throttle Quadrant from Honeycomb Aeronautical works in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. As you can see, I have the sim itself up and running behind me because at the end of the video, I'm going to jump into the sim. We're going to pull some screen video captures and talk about a few settings and a few ways to tweak and maybe correct a few simisms that you may be suffering from depending on what's going on, what update you have for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, and potentially which, which firmware you're running with on the Bravo or any other updates they've made going forward. I know sometimes when these videos get left on YouTube, you may stumble across it within the first couple days, weeks, or months of it being up, and a lot can change in that time period. So this video itself is going to be a review of the Bravo Throttle Quadrant in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, but there will be times where it sounds like I'm critiquing Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 itself, and there's going to be a slight reason for that. Now, if you're new to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and how things are going for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, do know that Honeycomb Aeronautical is doing coding for the Bravo, but for the most part, a lot of that for this flight sim. The Bravo is being coded by Asobo and the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 team. So a lot of the profiles, a lot of the functions of the autopilot and other features already on this unit are being programmed by them, the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 teams, and not Honeycomb. Another thing I want to define early on, and it's something that's been used by many other people. I did not coin this term. I've heard other people use it. And it's a term called a simism. It's an issue within the sim, which could be a glitch. It could be something that doesn't work exactly 100% right or something in between. Uh, it could be all sorts of issues that you yourself might find as a user, I might find as a user, or even the people developing the sim will know of and say, hey, this will be fixed later on. It's just nothing that's a big deal right now. Now, to some people, some simisms might be huge, uh, but over time, these do get remedied. So, simisms an oddity, glitch, or a problem within the flight simulator that stops something from being 100% accurate or maybe makes something not work perfectly, being this. So, as we get into this review, I'm gonna go talk from left to right and back around on top, saving the autopilot functionality for last, okay? Mainly because there are a lot of things I wanna talk about in there. So, let's jump right in and also, I'm not going to be doing a huge in-depth review on the build quality, all the other parts that came with this. Uh, I have another video that was a huge in-depth, 20 plus minute long video talking about the overall build quality, customizability of it, and value of this product. And those three things right there are why I still recommend it. The value of this product is one, amazing, because you get a lot of features in one unit. It's a good size, it doesn't take up too much real estate on your desk, and it's built out of quality materials. It's built soundly. I can't find any problems with this. Like my laptops, my computers, heck, my car, and other things in life, like airplanes, have more jagged edges than this. And I hope that this stays more re reliable than some of the other things I've flown and driven in my life, and also computers as well. And so far, so good. The only thing holding back the Bravo is coding within Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. So value is great, build quality is great, customizability of this unit compared to say my old SciTech units, my TPM, my thrust lever units from SciTech. Uh, I did have a warm point many, many years ago, CH throttle quadrant. And while those offer customizability, there's nothing on the market like the Bravo and why I'm spending time talking about it and why I recommend it to anybody that's new to aviation, new to simming, or somebody from anywhere in between, all the way up to somebody retiring from flying 747s, 787s, A350s, whatever you're doing, this is a quality piece of equipment for your flight sim. So with all that out of the way, let's jump in and let's start left to right, like I said. As you've noticed, the lights are working. You can get this software from Honeycomb's website right now. So if you haven't done it, go to Honeycomb Aeronautical's website, if you have the Bravo, Download that so all your lights work. Pretty much everything works on the enunciator panel as well. So this is a great addition. Uh, the gear lever switch, it works. What else can be said about that? Lights work as well. 
The uh, trim is something that's gotten better over time. Now, this is another area where there's a sim-ism. Initially, the trim would go tick, 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 and then run away from you. So if you've flown, you've heard about runaway trim, you know how to take care of it, I hope. So please, if you're a student pilot, depending on what aircraft you're flying, you might have an aircraft that has sometimes runaway trim issues. Know how to counteract them. We know some big high profile issues out there. So the trim has gotten better. There's still a bit of a, like a catch up, and I'm not sure exactly why. It seems like it's one of those things where in flight simulators, you sometimes code in these catch-ups in a sense of, like if you're flying a real aircraft and you go twist the heading knob to set a heading into your DG or your HSI or one of your Garmin, Air, Garmin suites or uh, Aspen avionics suites, you're going to twist it real quick if you got to make, say, a 90 degree turn and then intercept something. And the way to do that is sometimes in the sim, you can't just have the increase, decrease, or the pitch trim always be one, 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 one every time. You might have to build in a code that says, oh, they twisted it real quick, so we need to put some kind of multiplier in there and work from there. It seemed like the multiplier on the pitch trim was a little too aggressive, and over time, it's gotten better. So the pitch trim has gotten better. It's a little bit more stable. I still see some weird issues here and there, but this is not a Bravo issue because I've gone into the Windows controller and watched it tick away. There's no weird runaway in the Windows controller. It's something within Microsoft License 2020. So the pitch trim is still a sim-ism. Uh, moving on, you have your all your axes here. The axes all work pretty fine, pretty well. There's no real glitching that I'm finding, except for a few simisms when it comes to one assigning thrust reversers. Because when you assign the thrust reversers, it's and it's the title for it is decrease throttle or throttle decrease. To me, I would assume toggle reversers would make a lot of sense to me. So there are a couple ways to set that up. We're gonna show, I'm gonna try to show that towards the end of the video here when we jump into the simulator and take a, a video capture. Um, moving left to right, I'm not finding any issues with one, the takeoff go around button with any of the other pieces that have multiple uh, functions built in. So you have the ability to have the reverser toggler, you have the ability to have the takeoff go around, and you can put your spoilers here, you can put your flaps over on the far side. You can really set this up to match whatever aircraft you plan or want to simulate flying, which is great because you can do a single engine, you can do a multi-engine, you could do a tri-jet, you could do a quad jet, you could do so many different things on here, aside from flying a helicopter, unless you're really, really, really trying to go overboard. But you can do a lot with this, and just the ability to pop these off and on is great. You know, there were you know, I think SciTech was the only one that you could just do the top, but having the ability to take off the entire piece and then put something different on is really nice. And it adds the functionality and customizability for your enjoyment. But then again, if you are a flight student and you're trying to save money in the long run by practicing concepts and theories within the flight simulator, so when you go fly with your instructor, you can impress them and finish your, finish your syllabus faster that's where something like this pays off in the long run because just a few flight hours with an instructor, gas, aircraft, and whatever other fees you have to pay, you've more than paid for this. You've probably paid for your desktop already. So over the course of your entire training, this thing and quality products like this really come in handy. So axes overall, no problems, no major issues I found. I have seen some glitches where axes don't always show up. Uh, this was a problem that I noticed first when I got my Bravo months back and I was trying to assign everything in Microsoft Lights in 2020. Um, I took this out of the box and I just finished setting up my SciTech TPM. And the TPM worked pretty well, but I noticed sometimes you didn't see the sliders move when you were assigning an axes or sometimes you would set it but then come back and it'd be dead. And I thought maybe it was just my equipment because I have old legacy SciTech equipment, which is now Logitech equipment. And I went in, deleted it, reassigned it, and that seemed to fix it. And that seems to be true with a lot of things on the Bravo, on my SciTech or now Logitech equipment, where if things aren't working perfectly or they're glitching or they're not 100% working the way you expect them to work, go back in, see what it was that it was assigned to, 
and then clear that, validate it, then go back in, use the auto scan or sign it by number if you know the number, maybe you wrote down, you took notes, then manually sign it or automatically assign it, validate it, and that should fix most of the glitches from what I've seen and what I've heard and what I've practiced myself with my Bravo. So axes are good. If there's a glitch, like I said, go in, delete, reinstate it, revalidate re it, and move on from there. Uh, you do have your tension piece on the far right-hand side. It has nothing to do with the simulator. It's just nice to have a tension for changing up how well the throttles move. Uh, you have your flap selector. It's really honestly just two buttons. So anything on here that is a button assignment works really, really well depending on what you're assigning it to. So flaps, no problem there that I've seen so far. Um, coming across for the switches for now, the switches are great because you can assign multiple tasks to one switch. So say, so you want to do a lot on here for a GA aircraft or some charter aircraft or say even some larger aircraft. You could assign lights that you would be you would have on on the ground, regardless of day or night, to one, sw one switch. Then lights that you would have on only during nighttime or certain conditions to another switch. And then lights that would be on for takeoff and landing and flight. So I know, depending on what kind of airplane you're trying to fly, that could be a lot of switches. But you can consolidate. You can also consolidate starting the engines. You can consolidate a lot of different features onto these switches just maybe do yourself a favor and i need to still do it get like a label maker and then put like a velcro strip on the top i know it, it takes away from the beauty of the honeycomb logo here but uh put something on top to remind you what you have here and then maybe put like a little little marker about which profile you've assigned it to because in the end you should be making a profile for every aircraft because not every aircraft is going to have the same functionality as the other ones or maybe you have a profile for advanced, not advanced aircraft, multi-engine, single engine, and commercial all the way up. Because a lot of these functions won't be useful on certain aircraft. Because you could assign them to something else completely or just leave them dead in a sense, not assigned. So switches work great. Uh, the lights are all working now. Now let's move on to the, the elephant in the room, the autopilot panel. So let's just drop all these down so we have a clear view and we can talk about this. I think overall, the future is bright for this. Right now it's not working perfectly like I'd like to see uh, through the different updates. Now, as updates go along, things get fixed, some things break again, but the progression of how this has worked has gotten better every time. Is this a problem with the Bravo Throttle Quadrant? No. Is this an issue with asymism? Yes. This is really nobody's fault. It's just a matter of having the coding properly in place for all of these to function properly and do what you, the pilot or sim pilot, expect them to do. Because heading, nav, approach, reversal, altitude, course, and indicate airspeed, all these can have different functions depending on what aircraft you are flying and also what the autopilot is that's installed in that aircraft. So in the long run, what I recommend, I've said it once already, you need to create profiles for all the different aircraft you plan to fly, or at least within the autopilot realm, if you're going to be using this on top, which I would assume you are, because if you're investing in a product like this, you plan to maximize its use. And I know it takes time to get used to a new product. It takes time to get used to a new simulator. And there are things within the sim that as I read through the titles of what does what and how they don't really do what I would assume them to do because I've flown Pipers, I've flown Beechcraft, I've flown Cessnas, I've flown Embraers, uh, different types of, I've flown a Warren Citation and I've sat in a lot of different aircraft at air shows and played with the autopilots. Thankfully, I've been very lucky with that going to a couple of NBAA conventions, but there are a lot of different functionalities that are built into each different autopilot. And I highly, rec highly recommend you should, to get an idea of what that autopilot should do. That way, when you start to build your profiles on this, your Bravo within Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, you can really set them up the way they're supposed to work and take out features that maybe aren't supposed to be there. Because some aircraft might just have an altitude hold 
a heading hold and maybe a nav intercept function. So basically, if you hit heading, whatever you have the heading bug set to, it's going to go to it and then hold it. If you hit altitude, it's going to only hold whatever altitude you're already at. And then for nav, it will feed off of one, your heading selector. So wherever the heading bug is at, it's going to follow the heading bug. And then within a certain amount of degrees, it will intercept the nav signal and then track it inbound. And that's pretty simple autopilot. But from there, they get more complex. And what I've noticed so far, and I, it seems to be a combination of simisms right now, where a lot of the issues are really coming from the mode selector. Because as you cycle through the mode selector, and depending on which update of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 you have right now, it should be the VR update, the latest update. But if for some reason you haven't been able to log on, but you've been, I, I don't know if you can actually play it without an online connection. I can't remember for sure. I think you can because I've set it up and flown it without internet connection before. But when you go through the mode selector here, you end up sometimes interrupting another function that you've already set. So say you're on the ground, you're at the ramp, you've got the engine started, you've got all, everything on that needs to be on, you've done your checklist, if you're doing checklist, and uh, now you want to set up your program, programming for your GPS or your FMS. While you're doing that, most likely if you're doing a star or a SID or you're planning to do a star, and maybe not a SID, but you have an assigned altitude for your departure, climbing out of the airport you're flying out of, you're going to have an altitude to plan for. You're going to have a heading to most likely plan for, whether it be runway heading and multitude of other different things. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to pre-program all that stuff into the sim. And now that you have the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, for those of you that have got it, for those of you that are waiting, I'm sorry, the waiting is the hardest part. Uh, but do know that by the time you get it, hopefully all this coding will have matured to the point that you get to just plug and play and you don't have to do a whole lot of fine tuning because I'll tell you right now, there are profiles within Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 that you still need to go in and correct a few things. And you're gonna find that pretty quickly. Uh, it's manifold pressure, props, mixtures. Some things are swapped in areas where they shouldn't be. It's not hard to fix. I'm, we're gonna run through that a little bit later, but let's come back to the mode selector here. The mode selector is you cycle through each one of these functions and I'll demonstrate this in the video capture later. You're going to interrupt one other function and then what you need to do is you need to learn which function you need to be in to still get everything to work the way you want what i've been finding is if you're able to set up like say you're heading for runway heading if you're flying with a vor so say you're coming off of an airport or you're doing like uh was it jfk the whitestone or canarsie climb i'm trying to remember which one it is and you have to hit a radial or you can't turn beyond one of the radials within such a DME of one VOR, the JFK VOR, if I remember correctly, I really got to pull up the plate because it's been a while since I've flown out of JFK. But if you're doing one of those and you have to use a VOR and it's radial to make sure you intercept the right area or you don't go beyond a certain area, you're going to set this stuff up before you take off. You're not going to do this during your departure because that would be crazy. Really, it would be. You'd be working yourself to death. So you're going to pre-program everything. So while you're pre-programming everything, you're going to find yourself going back and fixing things. So what it seems to be is start with altitude and set your altitude. After you set your altitude, come over to the vertical speed. And if you're planning for a certain vertical speed on climb out, if you're not going to use flight level change, which I think on mine is the IAS, I think it may be labeled differently. I, I have a early production model here. But uh, get your vertical speed set if you want it set. That warning can actually wait, especially if you're planning to hand fly. But if you plan to use Flight Director, you might want to have that set up. It's not a big deal because you should be able to set up a button within the flight simulator itself to set the vertical speed without activating vertical speed, if that makes sense. A lot of airplanes have that functionality. So after that, heading. So are you going to set your course to the runway heading or are you going to set your heading bug to runway heading? Usually set your heading bug to runway heading unless you don't have a course to intercept later on. And then if you have a course you have to set, set the course then. But while we're doing all this, a couple of things on the autopilot and enunciator have gone to a reversionary mode, either roll or pit. 
Now, roll means it's going to hold the aircraft usually level. Sometimes it might mean it's going to hold the last roll state the aircraft was in. And that's going to come down to coding and the actual aircraft itself, but usually it means aircraft will be level. Pit means it's going to hold the last pitch of the aircraft. I'll throw in a little snippet later on where basically I set up an airplane to fly. I thought I'd set the altitude for it to intercept. I thought I left it in vertical speed mode, which I'm going to say in a second is a way to intercept your altitude and for it to level off. But unfortunately, I didn't notice it went to pit. I came back after putting the kids to sleep and I found the airplane flying along, hanging on the prop at like 32,000 feet. I was surprised it got that high without stalling, but I digress. So set all that up and then once you have it set up, come back and leave it on vertical speed. The reason being, for some reason right now with the way the functionality is coded here and the simplicity of telling the flight simulator and the simisms within it and the communication between I want you to do this coming from the Bravo to the sim. Um, it seems like the vertical speed is the safest way for you to still get to the altitude you've pre-assigned and level off. And then everything else seems to work properly from there. I'm still kind of seeing weird issues here and there where say the increase and decrease. Um, and this is like a 50-50 thing right now where sometimes I'll get in, it only does thousands of feet when I'm setting the altitude. Other times it does hundreds of feet. And this just seems to be a simism for right now. Uh, setting up the heading bug and sometimes the course. When I'm doing the increase decrease, it will set up the heading bug with either units of one or units of 10. And the same way goes for the course. So this is one of those things that goes back and forth, which when I look online, when I look at the sim and how everything seems to be going, it seems to just be a simism, not an issue with the Bravo. So. Coming back, wrapping all of this up and how it works within Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, do I still recommend the Bravo Throttle Quadrant? I said it earlier. I recommend it because moving forward, you are going to get your best bang for the buck, the most future ready, maybe not future proof because nothing's ever truly future proof, but future ready training platform for your student pilot, for yourself or for your flight sim needs and desires going forward because there is nothing else out there that has all of this functionality on one unit. And I really like it. Uh, this is the one I go for. My old SciTech uh, TPM module, it's collecting dust. My old SciTech uh, th uh, th throttle quadrants, they're all collecting dust. And even for this review, if you see my old videos, my old Cessna yoke, it's collecting dust right now because I took it off and I took off my switch panel, my autopilot panel, the instrument panel, all that. I uninstalled all the Logitech drivers and I'm just using the Extreme 3D Pro for the entire purposes of this review. Heck, even the Cannonball Run that just finished this last weekend, I did it with this, my Cessna rudder pedals from SciTech, the Legacy Warns, and the Extreme 3D Pro because I wanted to get a ton of time to really dive deep into how the Bravo works. And doing 20 plus hours of flying with the Bravo, the Extreme 3D Pro, uh, I've seen I've seen a lot of good functionality here. And I've seen a lot of things that are simisms, that are annoyances, but I've seen this product interact better and better with every update in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And because of that, I think there's a bright future for this product. I think there's a bright future for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And I think going forward, if you've already got one, you have a great piece of equipment. I really mean it. I have repped SideTech. I've grown up around aviation. I've grown up around a lot of different flight sims, a lot of different flight sim equipment. Family and friends have had them. I, from a young age, I was very lucky. I got a chance to fly as a kid. I got a chance to do some flight training as a kid and play around in flight simulators a lot when I was a younger child, when I was a very young child to the day right now where I'm going through recurrent once a year, going into a level D sim. And I've seen a lot of progression, not just in the sims, but in the equipment that you can buy as a consumer. And this is the first time I've seen a product really bridge that gap or muddy the lines between a consumer product and a professional sim product. And this is the first one I've really seen like that. I have not had my hands on an alpha yoke from Honeycomb yet, but I would assume it's made of the same caliber. And why I say 
if you're going to be buying new products for a simulator, go Honeycomb right now. I know you got to wait for it, but you got to wait for everybody's products. And you know how I rank them from the last state of flight simulation video I did. I talked in depth about that. So there's no point to do that here right now. So get on a pre-order wait for this, order it, wait for it. You're going to be happy when you get it. I know it stinks to wait. Like some people have said before, the waiting is the hardest part. But once you get it, you're going to be happy. And by the time it gets there, all the coding will have improved within Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. There will be a lot more functionality that will be improved on this. And you will be very happy with what you have. So that's the end of the review of the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Now we're going to jump over to the uh, video capture of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And we're going to talk about some of the functions and assignments that you can do within there that work really well. But, you know, there might be a little issues here and there of going, well, how do I assign this? Why does this work this way? And let's jump in and take a look at that over there now. So, all right, everybody. Here we are in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And let's talk about some of these features with the mode selector as you can see i'm flying the baron i have one engine secure i'm just doing some basic single engine stuff so let's jump inside the cockpit and let's see what i have selected already that way everybody has an idea what's going on here so i had set up the vertical speed to intercept a thousand feet notice we are slightly off but let me just hit the b button to Get the local timber setting, that seems to work. All right, so let's change a few things. So right now I'm on the vertical speed selector. So if I go over and I select to altitude, it goes into pit. Now this is one of the issues that you're gonna see in the sim. Let's change that up again. So let's go and let's change this to 3000 feet. Now let's go back to vertical speed, dial in the increase. And here we go. Now we should go pretty slow considering we're flying on one engine with the gear down, as you can see with the green light from the video tie-in at the bottom right hand of the screen. So with that set up, let's let it slowly climb and let's go down to heading. Now we're back to pit because we're not in an active vertical speed mode is one of the simisms here. Now in real life, you should be able to cycle through different modes and set everything up if you're using a single mode selector. And this is a simism that I hope gets fixed over time. This is more of an issue with, it seems like Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and not the Bravo Throttle Quadrant itself. So let's go ahead and put it in heading mode. And there it goes. So the second I hit the heading bug to activate heading mode, we have centered up the heading bug. Let's go ahead and yep, so I'm moving in only places of 10. So let's go to a heading of one, two, zero. And let's see, let's jump out of GPS world and let's get the VOR set up. While it's flying the heading, let's go jump into course. All right, so at least going into course, it holds the heading bug. Let's change the course up. And of course that, that moves in tens. So at least we can set the course for say like a VOR going into our destination and that should work out. So that's, that's going pretty good. All right, over to Indicate airspeed climb, that doesn't seem to change too much. So let's go ahead and let's turn the airplane back to our GPS course, the Magenta Line, children of the Magenta Line we all are these days. However, I do remember growing up and learning how to fly Loran. If you know what Loran is, you can figure out that I am not the youngest chicken in the flock or in the whatever the chicken yard is. Yeah, I'm getting older, but here we go. Intercepting the GPS. Let's go ahead and bring the heading bug as close as we can without hitting the heading button. Now, as you can see, the buttons are all working here. We've got nav, we have, let's go ahead and just get the altitude set and hold here at 1300. As see on the GPS, on the A autopilot annunciator, it's saying 1300 feet, so that's cool. Uh, and that's pretty much the majority of the simisms here that I really wanted to kind of beat in for a quick second that you guys need to know about how the moding, the mode selector is going to affect your sim experience. 
Now the cool thing is, you know, if you want to put it just right into vertical speed, you can have a lot of fun with this. Like, I mean, it will descend faster than most aircraft should. So you can do some really interesting things that you would never ever do in real life. As you can see, we're, we're descending at an alarming rate towards the ocean or yeah, where we are right now, there is an ocean there. So let's bring this puppy back up to a reasonable rate of descent. And you know, if, if you're reliving some movie sequences that you've watched from different movies, you know, you, you might have some fun with this. You can bring the airplane down to below radar coverage and uh, you know, let's just skim along the ocean, see what, uh, if you can touch the landing gear to anything, and we'll do a landing gear retraction here in just a second. Let me slow this roll. Let's see, huh? Oh, there we are. We're coming up close. And... Ooh, too fast. Spun at the wrong button. Never done that in the real airplane. Eh. And here we are, flying nice and close to the water. Warning engine pretty much secure for the most part. Which is unfortunate, because I would have assumed I could have probably secured the aircraft a little bit better than this in real life, but I can never get the props to truly feather in the flight sim yet. I assume that's going to hopefully be some, one of those things they fix in the future. Let's see if we're skimming the water tops. Oh, nice and close. All right. I don't want to make a fool of myself and crash while I'm making a video for YouTube. So I'm going to leave that at that. And that's pretty much the overall features you're going to see and be annoyed with on the mode selector when it comes to the autopilot setup. Here, just going back to autopilot, it holds that and it has no idea where we are for altitude. It says zero, zero feet. Yeah, we don't really want that. So let's go back to vertical speed and just hold that at zero so we don't crash into the water here. And rotating through, you'll see it goes into pit and it goes back to vertical speed the second we get back to it. So these are simisms. These are not deal breakers. Uh, however, if they are glitches, let's jump in and let's take a look at the controls right now. In the Bravo Throttle Quadrant setup, I have taken one of the default programming pieces, one of the default profiles, and renamed it. So here we go. So Bravo Throttle Quadrant, Bravo Throttle Quadrant, Twin G8 Advanced. So this is my main go-to for most of the GA flying because I really don't care about pulling pieces off when I fly a single engine. It just all stays on there. I probably should start pulling the pieces off. That way my kids don't mess with anything, but... I digress again. In here, you see all of your functions. If you find that you have a glitch and you want to fix one of the glitches, before you start clearing a function, go over from assigned and let's go and go to all. Now, when you go to all, it's literally going to be everything the first time you open this up. What I recommend you do, come all the way back up to the top if it'll let me pull it. There we go. Get that up top and let's just minimize all of this because there's no point in having everything out at the same time. VR, that's super cool. I'm so happy to see VR as part of this now. So let's take a look at the miscellaneous. In here, you're going to find your plus and minus. If there's a glitch on there, you can clear these and reassign them real quick. So we can clear the input here. So that's button 14. So you can always make a note and I always recommend that. I grew up at you know, learning how to code in DOS. Write down what you change so you can fix it later if for some reason you forget. Legal pads are great for this. Any paper, whatever you can write on that you don't get in trouble for writing on is a good idea. And so let's go ahead and clear the input, validate, and then let's reinstate it. Go in, start scanning, and that was the minus. So we're gonna go over here and go to decrease. Button 14 and validate. That's how simple it is. So what I'm gonna say is, if you have a glitch issue that is remedied by reassigning a button or an axis, or say you're having, a tr you're having trouble with a button or an axis within Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, and say you go to the Windows controller, and within the Windows controller you see everything's working just fine, you should come back over here delete that certain assignment, reassign it after you've validated the clearing of it, like I just did, then go back in, reassign it, validate it, and that should take care of the majority of glitches you're gonna see 
it's uh, within Microsoft License 2020 now. Now, I wanna go down and let's talk about reverse axes. This seems to be the major thing for anything within the throttle, prop, or mixture. Make sure this is always ticked. That'll save you some time. And then when it comes to your throttle. So I do have the video here. Again, I'm trying to tie these in. So let's pop this piece off and let's throw on the throttle number one piece. That's on there now. And let's just have some fun. And I'm going to set it up like I have my, actually, let's just save this. And I'm going to go over to my other setup here. Okay, now we are back. So, not sure what froze up the computer here, but did a couple changes. We are now in a different aircraft all together. And what I want to show you now are setting up the spoiler, which is pretty simple. That one pretty much works 100%, but the flaps I've seen can be an issue depending on what aircraft you're in. We'll look at that, what that assignment is, and we'll talk about thrust reversers. I prefer that style where you unlock them then you go into reverse thrust and you get your thrust reverse from that that's my preference up unlock bump them forward to reset the, th the actual throttles to get regular thrust that's my preferred method however there are a couple other different methods to do so let's go ahead and jump in over here controls and this is another one of my profiles that I have set up myself, but I took it from one of the basic ones straight out of the default settings. Let's go ahead and jump down. And remember, when you're messing around and you're resetting things, let's go to filter, let's go to all, and let's clean this up real quick. And let's jump in and take a look at the throttles. So here I have Basically, I have it set up so you need to unlock before you can go into full reverse thrust. And let me take the mouse cursor off that. So, worn and then together they work, but without each other, nothing happens. I prefer that method. I feel like that's closer to what I actually fly in the real, real aircraft and what I want. Given I don't fly a 747, I'd love to someday, but I don't. But I think this is great to use the reversers on top. That way you can engage the FADEC or at least command the FADEC to release the reversers and then apply the thrust. That's nice, I like it. Plus you can go from reverse idle to reverse max. It's pretty much how it works for at least the way you know some people fly. Uh, and then let's take a look how to assign those if you haven't seen a video that does that yet. So let's go ahead and just clear the input. This is throttle worn decrease. Clearing, validating, bye-bye. So you have a couple ways to do this. You have just toggle this way, but make sure you bring the button all the way back out again. That has caused some problems before. Just bringing it back and not letting it loose has caused some issues. So remember, when you validate it again, clear it and then go back in and then there you go. So let's do this one more time. This is the single button way to do it. Validate, throttle decrease number one. Let's come up here to auto scanning and there. Now push it forward to finish the job and validate. There you go. That is one of the simplest ways to do it. Another way to do your throttle decrease or engage reversers, clear input, validate, and let's go again. This time, let's go to the flight detent and let's go beyond, and then let's come back to the flight detent, and validate, and there you go. That is basically coming back from flight, basically base, regular thrust, anywhere from 100% to zero, or 1%, and then pushing past that red, the red line, the flight detent area, and then beyond, and that is your reversers. Another simple way to do it, but the way I like to do it Let's clear this, validate. Let's go and do it again. Start scanning. First, let's unlock the reverser and then let's apply the reverser together. Then let's come back to the flight detent and then lock the reverser in essence. Validate it 
And there you go. And that's how I've set up my commercial style for Jet's reverser setup. What I do want to show you though next will be the flaps. This one got me when I was going through my coding and I was like, or assignments. And I was like, ah, this one, okay, you got me on this one, it makes sense. But let's find flaps. Initially, I had done flaps to the, ah, uh, what is it? Flaps zero to 100%. That did not work. So you have to come all the way up here, and it makes sense, it's all the way at the top. You don't have to hit reverse axes, which is great, unless, say, you're flying a Piper aircraft or another aircraft that has a pull flap lever so then you could start with the flaps at the bottom for zero and all the way to the top for max flaps for that aircraft this this could add functionality for a person flying a ga aircraft that has a pull flap lever and i know this is not going to be the same direction in which you pull it but again it kind of works something else you can use to add seem add realism to it in a certain extent which is the whole point of this so this one for the flaps is going to be flap axes negative 100 to 100 percent and that's it spoiler is easy you don't have to reverse that axis when you're setting it up and again this was partly one of the default profiles set up in microsoft flight sim 2020 that i just made my own i started to mess with it i got everything the way i really wanted it and then i went to save it and that's preset manager come in here you just basically rename it, save it. You can duplicate these to then make it more so for each aircraft that you want to do. So you can start with one. And usually what I'd recommend is go with the maximum number of engines you might fly. Get everything set up the way you want it, save it. And then when you want to set it up for an uh, aircraft with fewer engines, then set all of this up on top and uh, for all your axes where your throttles are going to go and everything. Set that all up and then come back in here and rename and then name it basically just duplicate then give it a different name when you're all over with with it so that's all i've got in the sim right here thanks guys for watching this let's jump back over to the camera so that pretty much wraps up everything i want to talk about now there are probably a ton of other things we can cover for the bravo throttle quadrant within microsoft flight sim 2020 but let's wrap this up with what i said in the beginning first off I highly recommend the Bravo Throttle Quadrant if you're going to get one, if you need one, and if you're going to build a sim, this is the best way to go for your Throttle Quadrant. Two, Asobo and the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 teams are designing the profiles and the majority of the coding for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. So there will be times where you're going to have to wait for that coding to catch up to the full potential of the Bravo. The good thing is, if you're still waiting for your Bravo Throttle Quadrant, most likely, there will be more mature coding for it when this is all said and done. For those of you that already have your Bravo Throttle Quadrant or you've had it for a couple months like I have, you've seen this evolve into a better and better product. It's gotten better. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 has gotten better. And really, when I say this has gotten better, it's because the coding for it within Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 has gotten better. And even the plugin for X-Plane 11 got, has gotten better. And that's my next review coming. That's the final review for the Bravo that I'm doing, and that's how it works in X-Plane 11. That will probably take a week or two as I have a lot of other things coming in for flying and my other duties with the job I have currently. So as soon as I get that one done, it will be posted. But with everything I've said, I hope this has helped. As you can see, I've swapped a few things up on top, be considering the uh, computer crash or the SIM crash. But remember, you are going to run into SIMisms with any equipment you have. It's not always the equipment's fault. Know how to validate it. Know how to figure out where things are and if things aren't really working. And if you are running into an issue and you think it's your Bravo Throttle Quadrant, go to the Windows page where you can see all of your game peripherals and go in and make sure all the buttons and axes are registering properly. From there, you can get a good idea if things are 100% the way they should be. And so far, mine has been great. Mine's been perfect. It's just waiting for all of the coding to catch up. So thank you all for your time. If you didn't like the video, please tell me how I can do a better job next time. If you did, like and subscribe. Notice I leave that at the end of the video because I hate putting that at the beginning. I'm doing this because I really enjoy this and I want to make sure that anybody out there that is coming into aviation, into flight simulation, 
gets good information, unbiased information, and from people that have been around aviation for a long time, which I have been. And I think this product, and there are plenty of other products out there, will help you get started. And if you're planning to become a flight student and take yourself into a career of aviation, or say you're stepping away from your career of aviation and moving somewhere else within flying, this is something that's great to help you out as well. So thank you all for your time. Like and subscribe if you liked it. I'm here to help. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Stay safe, stay healthy out there, and happy end to 2020, and a happy 2021 to everyone out there. See you again real soon. Bye-bye.